what happened, they told the Hubble telescope to focus in on a dot. <clears throat> they found a dot above the Big Dipper. You can see the picture of it there. It is about the size of a grain of sand held at arm's length. And it was black. They said, we don't think there's any stars there. Let's focus in on that spot and see what we can find. They took pictures for 10 days straight, focusing in on that dot. After 10 days, they, they, there were more stars in that dot than they could count. These were brand new stars, never been seen before. Called it Deep Field, uh, uh, Hubble Deep Field. Looking up there saying, man, that's stuff we didn't know about. Assumption would be that it's that way all through space. Truly, the stars cannot be numbered, which is what the Bible says. They cannot be numbered. But how do you tell the distance to the stars, and how can the earth be 6,000 years old and the stars be so far away? Fair question. Uh, Stephen Hawking said, stars are so far away, they appear to be just pinpoints of light. We cannot see their size or shape. How do we tell different types of stars apart? For the vast majority, there's only one thing we can see, and that is the color of their light. If you get the biggest telescope on earth, this is not it, by the way, <coughs> spotting scope, but if you get the largest telescope on earth, and look at the closest star, which is Alpha Centauri, four and a half light years away, all you're going to see is a dot. If I focus this in on the sun, it'll start to get you know, bigger and bigger, and you can actually flames, see flames leaping off and see the spicules, and you can see color changes, and you can actually see features of the sun. When you look at a star, you never get to see that. Nobody has ever seen a star as far as any of the features of it. You get the biggest telescope on Earth, it's going to be nothing but a dot in your scope. All you can tell is, I said, that's a red one, that's a yellow one, that's a blue one. That's all you can see. So anything we do, we have to make, do based on assumptions just from the color. But how do you tell the distance to the star? Well, I taught high school trig for years, and if you guys had trig, you know how it works. Uh, if you have two observation points, you can calculate the third distance. You have to know it. It's a solving a triangle. Trigonometry deals with triangles, so you sine, cosine, tangent. If you know two, one distance and two angles, or two, two distances and one angle, you can calculate the rest of the triangle using sine, cosine, tangent. Here's the problem. Earth is only 8,000 miles in diameter, which compared to star distance is, is zero. It's nothing. So if I'm looking at a star and somebody over in China is looking at a star, we are 8,000 miles away from each other, straight line through the Earth. That would be nothing. What they've done to enlarge the distance to look at a star, instead of just being opposite sides of the Earth, the Earth is also going around the Sun in this great big huge circle. We're going 66,000 miles an hour, and it takes us a year to go around. Great big racetrack. Well, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is about 93 million miles, average. And that's, that's a lot, but at the speed of light, it's not much. At the speed of light, it's eight minutes away. It takes the sunlight eight minutes to get to the Earth. So if we're eight, mi eight light minutes from the Sun, the diameter of our orbit going around is 16 light minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a star in January, and then we're going to look at the star in June, and we have now gone halfway around this monster circle. And we're going to get two observation points to try to enlarge the base of our triangle. And it sounds huge. Man, that's 186 million miles. Well, it's still not much. A year has 525,000 minutes in a year. If this picture here showing the little yellow dot was the scale, if that yellow dot represented Earth's orbit, not the Earth's diameter, the orbit of the Earth, it's way too big for the picture. What we're going to do is try to get to show you the math involved here. If I had two surveyors setting up with their transits or telescopes, and they are 16 inches away from each other, and they're both looking at a dot 525,000 inches away, which is eight and a third miles. Would you agree that would make a rather skinny triangle? Let's go out in the parking lot and draw a triangle with you know, point A and point B 16 inches apart, and point C eight and a third miles away. It's going to make a real skinny triangle. That is exactly the triangle you get when two people on opposite sides of Earth's orbit try to measure one light year. One. Now, and I'm not sure exact, you can tell exactly where you were six months ago. I think that would be a little stretch of the imagination to say, oh yeah, six months ago in January we were, where were we over? <laughs> I'll give them that. I won't even argue that. I just would bring that up, you know, for appeal, Your Honor, in case we need to. Uh, 
you can't know exactly where you were six months ago. But the angle you get with that is 0 0.017 degrees. Now let's imagine this. I want you to get two guys to set up their surveying transits. They're 16 inches apart, and I'm going to go put a dot eight and a third miles away, but they don't know how far away it is. They're both focusing in on the dot, and they see this dot out there. Here's the only information they have. The measurement between themselves, 16 inches, and the angle out of parallel. I say, guys, I want you to calculate how far away that dot is based on that little angle change you get. I think that would be difficult to measure one light year. You'd certainly be, there'd be some guesswork involved, okay? Now, if you want to measure 100 light years, you've got a much worse problem. Now you've got to move your dot 830 miles away. If we had two guys on the roof of this building here in Pensacola, Florida, 16 inches apart, and they're both focusing on a dot in Chicago, which is 830 miles away, but they don't know how far away it is, they're going to tell me how far away it is based only on their angle of their telescope out of parallel. I would say that's impossible. Impossible. To measure 15 billion, no question, that's impossible. I don't think you can measure 100 light years, not with real numbers, not with real measurements, but this textbook says they can measure, parallax trigonometry can measure up to 100 light years. Okay, I doubt it, but I'll give them 100. I'll give them 1,000 if they quit crying, okay? The fact is you can't measure a billion. Simple fact. So here's some things to consider about starlight. They said in, in 2004 that the new SIM technology, Space Interferometry Mission, they hope to get where they can improve the distance of measuring star to stars. And they say this accuracy will enable SIM to determine stellar distances to 10% accuracy out to a distance of 482,000 million million miles. That's 82,000 light years. And then it says, this is an improvement of several hundred times over what is possible today. Well, now, wait a minute. If they're going to improve it several hundred times, and it ends up being 82,000, what's 82,000 divided by several hundred comes out to be several hundred. Apparently, they're admitting they can only measure several hundred light years, which I would agree. I mean, I would say that's even a stretch, but I'll give them several hundred. They can't measure billions, is the point. So when your students in school get taught, oh, that, that star is, you know, 14.629 you know, billion light years away, say, I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. It might be, but you can't prove that. They're making up a story. With SIM technology, they hope to finally be able to get out to where they can measure most of the way across our galaxy, and we're in it. We can't even measure across our own galaxy, let alone these distances to other galaxies. So I think we should look at the stars and say, wow, what a mighty God we serve. Instead of going out there and say, well, we know how far that way it is. We know it evolved. I mean, it's just that egotistical attitude some of these atheists get that makes you want to slap them in the face like, man, why don't you serve God? Look what he made, you know. Here's the things to consider concerning starlight. Then we'll take a break. Number one, we cannot measure these great distances. It just cannot be done. Number two, nobody knows what light is. Is it, they call it a wave or a photon or a particle. You know, we, we, we know what it does. We use it all the time. But actually, give me a jar of it and paint it red. Nobody knows the substance of it. What is light? And we sure don't know that it always travels the same speed all through time or space. The entire theory behind a black hole is that light can be attracted by gravity. Well, if light can be attracted by gravity, then you cannot say the speed of light is a constant. Okay? At Harvard University back in 99, they slowed light down to 38 miles an hour. The next year they slowed it down to one mile an hour, and the next year brought it to a dead stop. Light goes, you know, pretty quick, 186,000 miles a second. They slowed it down. It was done at Harvard, it was done at Smithsonian, it was done at Cambridge University, a repeatable, demonstrable experiment. Now that is science. If you do an experiment, get a result, somebody else follows your data, does the same experiment, gets the same result, that's science. They slowed light down.